Hi, this is ETF.com's Exchange Traded Fridays podcast, a weekly podcast covering developments in the ETF industry. My name is Sumit Roy, and I'm Senior Analyst for ETF.com. This week, we've got a special episode for you all. As you might know, we're days away from the ETF.com awards in New York City. All of the big names from the ETF industry are going to be there, and we're going to be recognizing the people and the funds that had the biggest impact in 2023. So in this episode, we're going to fill you in on everything you can expect at the awards. With me today are two of my esteemed colleagues, Ron Day and Kent Tooney. Great to have you on the show, guys. Thanks, me. Great to be here. Thanks. I think it's actually the first time you guys have been on the show. So before we get into it, why don't we have you guys say a few words about who you are and what you do at ETF.com. Ron, why don't we start with you? I'm uh, Ron Day, Managing Editor of uh, ETF.com. From planning out the morning, sketching out the newsletters, trying to help a little direction for our ship, editing, writing. You know, there's several hats I wear and it's all uh, it's all a lot of fun. You do it all, Ron. And how about you, Ken? Why don't you say a few words about yourself? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, Kent Tooney, uh, I'm research lead at ETF.com. Uh, I'm also a certified financial planner and a practicing investment advisor. Um, and I focus uh, at ETF.com on education uh, content, educational content for every type of investor. I mean, from beginners to seasoned investors to financial professionals. So I'm always watching out for news uh, in capital markets uh, and in the economy, anything that can help our readers. Absolutely. So guys, I want to run through some of the award categories to give people a sense of what they can expect next week. So, you know, obviously we have a lot of categories out there um, and we're going to get to those. But before we jump into that, uh, you know, I've been with ETF.com for a dozen years now, but believe it or not, I've actually never been to the award show in person. You guys have. So can you tell us what to expect? Ron, Kent, what it, what is the show about? Is it all glitz and glamour? Well, it's substance to me. There's a lot of substance. <laughs> And good snacks, lots of good snacks. It's it's a fun event. It's the uh, the location is fabulous. The the Tribeca rooftop, and I remember like last year hanging out on the balcony just uh, chatting with Kent and both of us uh, remarking on how great the location is. It's it's a it's a beautiful space and great people in the industry. Lots of good conversation. I think people generally enjoy themselves. Enjoy chatting, enjoy networking, and uh, provided the weather holds up, we had great weather last year. Provided the weather holds up, it's it's a really nice evening. Yeah, I'll add a little bit to that. I live down south on a little place called uh, Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. So I come to New York City, and this event, I mean, you're you're like Ron said that the venue is is outstanding. I mean, there's uh, large uh, windows with sweeping views of New York City. Um, and you're reminded that, the, that you're in the financial capital of the world. Uh, and then, so then, you know, inside the room, you have hundreds of ETF industry insiders. Everyone's excited. ETF uh, had a record year last year. Uh, I mean, we're approaching $10 trillion in assets. Um, so everyone's together just celebrating the same thing. But it's a, it's a great way to network and just share the celebration with everyone in the same industry. That's awesome. I'm super excited to go. Now, guys, like I said, there's a lot of great ETF awards that are going to be handed out on April 17th. Mm -hmm. But one of the most prestigious is the best new ETF award. To qualify for this award, the ETF had to essentially have been launched in 2023, which sets this award apart from the best ETF award where a fund could have been launched in any year to qualify so I'm looking through the list right here, and the finalists for best new ETF are the Capital Group Core Balanced ETF CGBL, the Innovator Equity Defined Protection ETF TJUL, the Pro Shares S and P 500 High Income ETF ISPY, the Roundhill Generative AI and Technology ETF CHAT, and last but not least, the Roundhill Magnificent Seven ETF ticker symbol M-A-G-S. Now, it's pretty obvious why some of these funds are finalists. Generative AI and the MAG7 were huge themes last year. But the other three 
funds. They're pretty strong contenders as well. You have T-Jewel, which was the first buffer ETF to offer 100% downside protection, something we've never seen before in an ETF. You also have iSpy, a covered call ETF that uses daily options to generate income. And then you have CGBL, which is a very successful active fund that holds a combination of quality stocks and bonds. Kent, do you have any thoughts on these funds? Yes. Uh, you know, what, what stands out to me, I think, would be if there were one theme of the of, of the entire awards in terms of the style or uh, category of ETF, and that's active funds. I mean, you know, the CGBL, I, when I think about uh, capital group, I mean, I, I go back, I don't know how many years, uh, 25 years or so. Capital group, uh, to me, is, is, is known for their active mutual funds. I mean, Growth Fund of America was one of the biggest mutual funds or is one of the biggest mutual funds ever. And Capital Group um, is taking that over to their ETFs. So a lot of them are active, actively managed. And, there, and there's a couple of other funds in this category that are actively managed. Absolutely. Active is, of course, a huge topic in the ETF industry. Active ETFs, I think, accounted for something like 5% of assets under management in the industry entering last year, but they picked up over a fifth of all inflows. We, of course, you know, have a dedicated uh, Best New Active ETF Award category too, and CGBL is a finalist there as well, along with the AB Disruptors ETF, ticker symbol FWD, the Fidelity Disruptive Technology ETF, FDTX, the Panogram CLO ETF, CLOZ, and the PIMCO Commodity Strategy ETF, CMDT. Personally, I think uh, CLOZ is a really interesting ETF. You know, a lot of people, you know, they see this fund invested in CLOs and they say, I, I want to stay far away from this because, you know, you know, we heard about CLO, CDOs and things like that in the financial crisis. But these aren't the types of products that blew up back in 08 and 09. These are essentially e e ETFs that invest in senior bank loans, and the returns have been phenomenal. You know, CLOZ is up 17% over the past year, double the return for HYG, the largest junk bond ETF. So, you know, it's a really interesting ETF, though it is up against some stiff competition, right? We got disruptive ETF, disruptive technology ETFs and things like that. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, who comes out on top. Big mm -hmm. inflows into CLOZ. So, absolutely. Yeah. You know, we're looking at 2023. This year, with the market doing uh, doing what it does, I mean, it's just a, it's a, I'm looking at the inflow chart for 2024. So, year to date, and it's all green. Every yeah. inflow is, every, every flow is, is, is green. I don't see any outflows. And in an environment, you know, where people are looking at 5% interest rates, you know, they want to invest in fixed income. And this is kind of an under the radar way to pick up some extra yield. Like I said, up 17% of the past year. Ron, I wanted to kind of, you know, uh, turn to another subject. You know, we've been talking a lot about the serious award categories like best new ETF and best new active ETF. But the awards aren't all serious business. We actually have a fun mm -hmm. category as well which is the best new ticker award. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, uh, this is where ETF issuers get to show their their creative side. Um, you know, our busy uh, ETF folks who are hunting up uh, new ideas for for investments for us are also having a little fun with uh, with interesting names. But before we mention this year's uh, nominees, we you know we were talking the other day about you know does a good ticker necessarily mean a successful ETF? Not all the time, you know. We we we've seen a couple that have gone belly up, but you know it's a mixed it's a mixed uh, it's a mixed bag, you know. But again, get back to the creativity thing. You know, we had Yal Y A L L. We had the Maga. We had Vivek Ramaswamy's uh, D R L L. So uh, clearly people have a lot of fun with this category. Well, with, with naming their ETFs, but again, not always a sign of future success. This year's nominees. Now I'm going to try not to butcher the first one. This is the Defiance Israel Bond ETF, Chai, meaning life. Then we also have the, um, let's see, this is being issued by Exchange Traded Concept, 
MUSQ Global Ind Music Industry ETF. It almost sounds like it should be for Elon Musk because it seems like it's pronounced Musk, but it's MUSQ. I'm not going to try to pronounce uh, Musk Q. Music. We also I think have, that one's music. Is I'm that supposed mistaken. to be pronounced yeah, music? Yeah, I think that one's pronounced music. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll go. I'm <laughs> going with what you say to me. Yeah. Um, then we have the Strive Enhanced Income Short Matur Maturity ETF, BUXX, Bucks. Another, this one I like, Themes Cybersecurity ETF, Spam. And uh, finally, one that is a, a kind of a, um, almost sounds like a, kind of an ESG themed thing, Touchstone Climate Transition ETF, ticker HEAT, H-E-A-T. You know, people having, having some fun with the tickers. Yeah, yeah. I'm super excited to see who the winner in that category is. I actually yeah. wrote up a, a piece earlier this month looking at past winners of the award. And boy, have there been some good tickers. You mentioned MAGA, yeah. Ron. There was also Weed, which was the last yep. winner for obvious reasons. TGIF, <laughs> <laughs> Nerd, uh, Pause was another one. Whiskey yeah. and Crack. Pause was, you know, really stood out to me because you know, this is focused on, I think, the pet industry. And you think, wow, this is a super niche uh, type of fund, but it has 70 million in assets. It had as much as 400 million in assets at its peak. Um, who would have thought, right? Um, yeah, I wonder what caused it to, uh, like, why did it lose its, um, some of its yeah. AUM? <laughs> but that's that's another podcast. That's another podcast, yeah. But uh, yeah, so many great winners. But like you said, Ron, I'm just a great ticker doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the fund is going to be successful. TGIF and Whiskey, which were past winners of this award, actually do not exist anymore. They're yeah, great tickers. But unfortunately, just uh, they didn't resonate enough with investors. So they shut down. Um, yeah, I don't know what's happened. I mean, weed was we had a couple good. Um, all the all the marijuana ETFs had had a couple good uh, months or a good, I guess, beginning of the year, but I don't, I haven't really followed that one too closely. Yeah, yeah, but um, you know, before we wrap this up, do you guys have a favorite ticker either out of you know any of the tickers we've ever seen or these past winners? I I won't ask you to comment obviously on the finalists this year, but. Like I said, we had Weed, TGIF, Nerd, Pause, MAGA, Whiskey, and Crack win in the past. Any of those or any ticker in general that, you know, is your favorite? I'm trying to think what, what comes to mind. You know, any usually with me, if it's music or food related, I kind of jump. I okay. think Kent might feel the same way about the music things, but. We did have some word. good uh, restaurant ones, like we had Bite and we had Menu. I thought those are pretty good for a restaurant. Uh, it's food. a good one. Yeah. yeah. I always liked uh, Cows and Calf. You know, I mean, oh, I yeah, those, those are great. Those are great. Yeah, yeah, cows was the fo focus on the large cap uh, and then calves focus on the small cap. So aptly named, easy to remember. And they've also had success yeah. in gathering assets. Those hit it out of the park. They have the best tickers and they have become multi-billion dollar funds. They, they've done it all. Maybe one day we'll have to do a story. We'll have to talk to the people who brand these and just find out like some of that process that, that happens. You know, how, it, how they actually arrive... Because I'm sure some people want really mundane names, and then there are others who say, "No, let's right. kind of spark some interest." Well, speaking of music, Ron, I mean, uh, you know, some of the ba the best bands in history in terms of success did not have the greatest names, or even the best named bands that may may not go anywhere. So anyway, it it, it does come down to substance. Eventually, the name doesn't make the the ETF and nor does it make any other business, I don't think. But I think it helps in the beginning. I think it kind of makes it gets people talking. It is a marketing thing. ETFs can be heavily marketed and, and anything you can get in the beginning helps. But eventually the investors, you know, vote with their with their pockets or their their investments. And um yeah, some of these interesting, creative, even funny uh, ticker symbol names uh end up uh shutting down just because what? the substance is not there. What about you, Samit? Do you have a favorite for your yeah. after your dozen years? Yeah, I mean it's a great question. Um, I don't know. I like TGIF a lot. That that was a great ticker, and that was an ETF that actually paid out uh, distributions every week. So that's why they called it TGIF. Oh, know, that's right. Friday, Friday. So I, I like that one a lot. I like Crack also. C R A K. That one, you know, a lot of people might not know what that is just by looking at the ticker, but there's a thing called crack spreads, which is essentially refining margins. 
It's the amount of money that refiner, refiners make by uh, converting crude oil into petroleum mm. products like gasoline and diesel. And that spread is called uh, the crack spread. So that's why mm -hmm. where that ticker comes from. Crack holds a, a basket of refining stock. So it's kind of a, you know, kind of a niche type of ETF, but I thought it was a cool ticker. I remember at a Halloween, at a Halloween party, we kind of, we did a, we, we were goofing off with the, goofing on the, uh, the ticker names and uh, one of our um, employees dressed up was I think it was Salvador Dali for the Dali ticker. Oh, and, that, uh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I think I was leaning heavily toward the the P U N K. So yeah, we'll we'll see who wins this year. Um, of course, you know we've talked about just a few of the awards categories in today's podcast, but there's a lot more. There's new ETF issuer of the year, new fixed income ETF of the year, thematic ETF of the year. We got so many. Definitely stay tuned. And, um, you know, even if you're not going to be at the award show, check out our website. You know, we're going to be posting the winners as soon as, you know, we know who they are. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, you know, seeing you both in person at the yeah. award next week. Looking forward to seeing you in New, in New York, Samit. Definitely. And, and listeners, we hope to see some of you as well at the Tribeca rooftop in New York City on April 17th. Until then, take care and catch your next week's episode. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can find this and all other Exchange Traded Fighters episodes on ETF.com or on any major podcast platform.